Hello, my name's Heather Marshall. I'm a book conservator at the British Library. I'm going to talk to you about the conservation of an 11th century Greek codex, its role as an artefact and a functioning binding. As a book conservator, I evaluate damage to a binding, look at the level of risk, decide on conservation treatment and then carry out the treatment. Have you ever thought about the process of making decisions about treatment options and the complexities within these? In 2017, I was given the job of conserving additional manuscript 40655 at the British Library. It is a Greek codex from the Meteora Monasteries from the Monastery of Rosano. A manuscript datable to the 11th century in parchment. It contains Historia Lausiaca by Palladius and Historia Religiosa by Theodoretus. The Lausiac history is a seminal work archiving desert fathers, early Christian monks who lived in the Egyptian desert. It was originally written in 420 and purchased by the British Library at auction in 1922. It is a special binding with unique historical features. A certain approach was required and a dialogue was needed with the curator in order to agree on the type of treatment and the extent of intervention needed, taking into consideration all factors in its use and historical context. This manuscript is looked after by Peter Toth, who is curator of ancient and medieval manuscripts at the British Library. It is written in iron gall ink and black ink in a 17th century Byzantine style binding covered in brown goat skin with blind tool decoration. It has unmatched reused wooden boards. It is thought that left board is oak and the right board beech both having different bridling attachments from previous use. It is sewn in two halves with an unsupported link stitch, all along sewing on three stations and two kettle stitches. There is a textile spine lining extending over the joints to the outer face of the boards and the end bands are sewn through this. The primary end band tie downs loop through the lining and the secondary sewing is in Allegreca style. The upper and lower boards were detached, with the sewn connection, textile spine lining and leather all broken and split. The sewing structure was broken in the upper part of the text block, extending down to sewing station 3. This was completely split, about one third from the left joint, the head and tail end bands were broken at the joints with the upper, upper board and were now only attached to the text block by the secondary end band sewing. The tail end band sewing was partially missing. The parchment text block is misshapen and cockled due to past environmental damage and water damage and the wooden boards have insect damage. The British Library is an institution where museum objects still perform their original function. This is a huge challenge for conservation. The future role of the binding needed to be considered and this manuscript is requested for access. It is a very significant manuscript. Greek manuscripts from the Byzantine period are primary source material for biblical study and evidence of cultural history and craftsmanship. The structure was very damaged and was unable to be requested by readers or handled safely. The treatment aim was to return the binding to a functional state to stabilise and preserve the current structure. Also to preserve all evidence of craftsmanship. So it was, it was important that any repair was added as a reconstructive element without changing or removing any evidence of the original binding. Of course, there is a fine balance between aesthetic repair and repair to restore functionality. Indeed, this is often an ambiguous subject 
as concepts and repair techniques develop and change. The main treatment options considered were to make no interventive treatment and to protect with a custom designed storage solution. The second to repair the sewing in situ, reattaching the boards and rebacking the spine. And the third was to re-sew and rebind the parchment manuscript text block into a non-adhesive binding, then store with the original binding. The first option could not be considered, as it needed to be made safe for handling. The third option was in balance considered too interventive. Given that, it was decided that the fine balance could be addressed by devising treatment to be durable, but not to remove or change any of the existing binding structure. Which means this would be the second option. As the treatments to were to be custom made to the binding, it was agreed that methods would need to be flexible and reviewed throughout the treatment. The treatments were presented to the curators in advance and review meetings were held throughout the duration. So, I started treatment. The paper paste stands on the inner front and back boards were loose and very easy to lift and detach, so these were removed during treatment. The leather turn-ins at head and tail were also lifted, so the leather could be lifted from the joints. This allowed the board attachments and bridling to be observed. Care was taken to record the original position of the leather turn-ins. The spine lining was lifted from the spine at the head and tail as far as it could go, up to where the end band tie-downs were holding it in place. A layer of hardened adhesive could be observed on the spine. This was softened and gently scraped off. The sewing structure was broken within the first eight quires. After careful study, it was clear it could be repaired in situ by replicating the original sewing technique in the missing and broken areas only. As unsupported sewing only consists of one material element, being the thread, so it makes it a lot easy, easier to successfully just add back in the missing parts of the structure. Before repair, any very loose and detached threads were removed and kept. The broken sewing threads from the intact bridling on the front board were also removed. These were actually the added repair threads from which created a board attachment when the board was reused. The parchment spine folds were weak and broken, mainly where the sewing was also broken. They were repaired in situ with toned Tengujo Japanese tissue pre-coated with Isinglass and then activated with a 5% solution of Isinglass in water. The repair sewing was made with linen thread through the existing sewing holes. It was possible to loop the new thread under the existing bridling loops on the upper board to create a new board attachment to the text block. A blunt needle slipped easily through and under these threads. So the sewing was made from the board to the centre of the text block. This process repeated the original sewing and all along link stitch, picking up the loops from each station where the new sewing met the original intact sewing. In this way the sewing was replicated only where needed, down to choir 8 where the sewing repair was only made at station 3. This slide shows three link stitch sewing repairs and repairs to kettle stitches. At the broken lower board attachment, sewn loops were made from inside the gatherings of the intact sewing and a new bridling was made using the existing sewing parts. Replacing the missing parts of the sewing pulled the structure back together, ensuring that the text block was solid and that the warp parchment fitted back together also. The shape of the spine naturally fell back into place with a slight round. To consolidate and protect the spine, sectional linings of Japanese paper were adhered with dry wheat starch paste. A new aero linen spine lining was then pasted to the spine and over the back edges of the boards, reaching over the joints, 
to reinforce the repaired board attachment. This drawing shows the sewing structure without the text block. There are two re repair threads which were used. These are shown in green and, and blue. The end band cores took the form of the spine lining edge where it met the head and tail of the spine. The primary sewing consisted of thread sewn through the spine lining in simple loops, extending down through the centre of the gatherings and through the spine lining to form the tie downs. The secondary end bands were sewn in Allegreca style. The end band at the head was broken at the join with the upper board. Some of the primary end band tie downs were also broken and loose. The end band sewing at the tail was detached and partly missing at the upper joint. End bands play a large part in the structure of a binding with unsupported sewing, helping with the board attachment and shaping and controlling the opening of the shape of the spine. So repair and consolidation was key in returning structural st stability to the manuscript. The spine linings had acquired a dual use as the end band core and as an aid to the board attachment. So it, decided this, it was decided this area would need extra strength and support. Alum toward skin was cut to, the, to shape and edge paired, then inserted under the primary tie downs and spine fabric lining at head and tail, and then adhered onto the board. A more narrow strip was inserted under the spine lining and the primary sewing. This was then secured with a stitch. This was also used as a basis for the reconstruction of the primary end band sewing on the tail. Linen thread was taken through the existing kettle stitch holes in the parchment gatherings and through the new aero linen spine lining, then around the alum toward support, looped in a figure of eight. Then secured through a pre-existing lacing path on the board. This then allowed the primary end band to be reconstructed using a linen thread to re-sew, repeating the Allegreca style. It was important to make clear that this area was repaired, so a natural coloured thread was used. On the head, the damage was less, so linen thread was sewn in discrete loops around the alum toward support and through the aero, aero linen spine lining to consolidate the split fabric lining, broken end band sewing and loose tie downs. The re-back re repair to the spine needed to provide stability to the fragile and broken spine leather to consolidate the spine and ensure that handling gave minimal risk to the structure. The previous spine had been tight back. The parchment text block had become cockled and expanded, putting pressure on the spine, the sewing, the joints and board attachment. Parchment gathering folds had also been left exposed. It was considered to leave the spine just lined with aerolining for strength, but the loose leather would have been too vulnerable. It was decided that the repaired spine would be given a hollow to ensure it was flexible. The aerolinin spine lining extending over the board joints had created strong joints and a strong board attachment. A paper spine former was made with Japanese paper and wheat starch paste, taking the exact form of the spine, forming a hollow structure. This was in order to create a gentle opening, protecting the spine and the joint from further strain. The areas of missing leather were reconstructed around the spine fragments by creating a rebate using layers of Japanese paper in the exact shape. This allowed the original leather to be secured, but without removing anything from the re reverse of the leather. You can see on the bottom right, the leather was left unchanged and nothing was taken away. A palimpsest manuscript 
was discovered under the paste down on the inner left board. This was Greek, Greek script written on paper and was probably a paste down if the board had been reused from another binding. It was an exciting discovery as it had not been viewed before. As part of the ongoing communication with curator Peter Toth, he expressed how interesting this was and advised it would be important to leave this manuscript exposed to allow for further study in the future. Therefore, the paste down that was removed from inside of the upper board would be kept but not adhered back onto the board. As a result, customised customized housing was designed to ensure there would be no risk of di disassociation for the removed elements and gave the option, if needed, that they could be reattached in the future. This was important for the future of the object at the British Library and for its security. An extra measure which emphasises and respects the original features of the binding whilst preserving it for the future. These images show the lined box with concertina storage flap, which is secured to the lid. The work done on the binding has left it safe for handling and has given valuable insights into the advantages of custom in situ treatments. It is when an object is in a fractured and degraded state and when at its most vulnerable that observations can be made from its inner structure and the binding technique can be more fully observed. It is also the deconstruction that takes place in the repair process that gives a one-off opportunity to record and observe palimpsest and other linings. Furthermore, it is when a montage of unofficial histor historical repairs exist that they themselves become part of the history of the binding and need sensitive repair in order to not remove some of what has actually contributed to the structure itself. It can be argued that rather than leaving objects with such unique features in disrepair, repairing in a strong but minimal way can allow what has been left after use to survive for longer into the future. This image shows the box with the concertina folder in the lid and also the pressure flap in the lid and also um, the customised lining around the treated binding. Thank you for watching and listening and please get in touch if you have any questions.